Now we're going to be carrying on with financial maths, moving on to accounts. When you start using the services from a service provider, then you need to open an account with them. Sometimes an account may be open for you in your behalf, like if you go to the doctor or something, they may open an account for you. When the services you are using involve money, then you'll be issued with a statement of your account. And that statement helps you to know about your financial standing with that service provider. Statements are generally issued monthly when necessary. They help you to know if you owe money to the service provider or, like in the case of a bank or a similar institution, how much money they may be keeping for you. In the case of an account where you are being charged for services, then the statement, the statement will tell you how much you owe and when you need to pay by and what you're being charged for as well. If you fail to pay in time by the due date, then you may be penalized in some way. So the statement will generally also let you know about any penalties that may be incurred if you don't pay on time. Penalties could be things like being charged interest or uh, losing access to the services that you are receiving. When you have an account with a service provider, unless it is a bank, then you should generally try and keep your bank, your account balance at zero because otherwise it means that you owe them something. So it's always a good idea to try and keep your account balance at zero. So when you do owe, then you pay so that you don't have to worry about incurring any penalties. Okay, so let's go on to an example where we're actually working with an account. So in this example, uh, this is an account from a dentist and you can see that it was issued on the 3rd of June 2023 and we've got a balance brought forward. This is how much was owing at the end of the previous month. So that was brought forward from the 30th of April. And then the account is saying that it was then paid on the 7th of May. So it was the amount that was owing was 847.50 and then that was paid. That's why we've got the minus over here showing that it's now going to be subtracted because it has been paid. And that's also 847.50. So the account was settled. Okay, so that everything was paid, there was nothing owing anymore. Then new charges were incurred over here. We have consultation fee, we have the scaling and polishing and cleaning, we have x-rays and filling. So all of these things were, are being charged for. Uh, we are going to have to work out the values of the different amounts that are being charged over here. You've got in this column, this is the amount that the dentist is actually charging for the different services. This is the VAT that they are required to, to charge based on what they are charging. And then this is the total amount that you would have to pay for that particular service. So over here, this is the X VAT amount. Then we've got the VAT and then this is inclusive of VAT over here, all of the ones in this column. And then we've got at the bottom here, the total due. This is the amount that what we're going to be able to work all of that out to be able to find out how much is how much is due altogether and then over here we've got the due date this is how much or this is how, when it needs to be paid by and at the bottom here you can see that it says interest will be charged on all amounts outstanding after the due date so that is the penalty that will be incurred if um, the account isn't settled on time okay so now let's have a look at working these out so first we're going to go and work out a so over here, A is in the VAT column. So we have to work out the VAT amount that is that has to be charged for the consultation fee, which had a charge X VAT of 450 Rand. Okay, so let's go and work that out first. So for, for A, we're starting with 450 Rand. And this, like I said, is the, the amount exclusive of VAT. This is the amount that the, the dentist is charging for that consultation. Okay, so this is 100% of what the dentist is charging. So it's, we're going to take that and divide by 100 for 100%. And we want to work out the VAT, which is 15%. So we multiply by 15. So remember, we take the amount that we've got, we divide by what we have, and we multiply by what we want. Okay, so that gives us 450 divided by 100 times 15 is 67 Rand 50. Okay, so that is what we're going to go and fill in for A. Okay, so now we know what A is. Next, we're going to go and work out B over here. So B is the amount that is going to be charged to the actual, to the patient, which is inclusive of that. So we're going to have to take the charge 
and the VAT together to find out what that amount is. So what we can do over here is we can just add them together. We don't need to do anything um, more difficult than that. We could take the 450 divided by 100 and times by 115 if we wanted to, but we don't need to do that. We can actually just add these two amounts. So that's what we're going to do for, uh, to work out B. So for B, we're going to take the 450, which is the amount that the dentist is charging, and we're going to add the VAT, which is the 67 Rand 50. And that gives us 517 Rand 50. Okay, so now we can go and put that in to our statement. Okay, now we're going to go on to C. So this is for the scaling, polishing, and cleaning. So for C, we don't know the charge, the amount that the dentist is charging, but we do know the VAT amount. Okay, so we're going to use the VAT amount to work out the charge, and then we'll work out the amount, the total amount over here as well. Okay, so first of all, for C, we know that the VAT amount is 37.50, so we're going to take that, 37.50, and divide by 15 because VAT is 15% and multiply by 100 because I want to know the charge, the amount that the dentist is charging, which is 100% of what they want to actually get. And that is the price X VAT. Okay, so I'm going to work that out now. So 37 Rand 50 divided by 15 times 100 and that gives me 250 Rand. Okay, so that is how much the dentist is charging for the scaling, polishing, and cleaning. Okay, now we're going to go and work out D, which again, we can just work out by adding these two together. So I've got the 250 for the charge and 3750 for the amount. And that gives us 200 and 87 Rand 50. Okay, now let's go on to the x-rays. So for the x-rays, we need to work out the charge and we need to work out the VAT. The amount that we've got in this one is the total amount, the 345 Rand is the total amount, so that is the price inclusive of VAT. So we have to work out the amount x VAT and the VAT amount. So I'm going to work that out by taking the 280, sorry, by taking the 345 rand and working it out based on that. So for E, we have 345 rand, and this, like we said, is the total amount inclusive of that, so that is 115% already. So I'm going to divide by 115 and multiply by 100, which is the amount for the charge, which is the price X VAT. So then I'm going to take my calculator and work that out. So 345 divided by 115 times 100, and that gives me 300 Rand. So that is how much the dentist is charging for the x-rays. And then we can work out F. Now to work out F, I know the total and I know this. So what I can do for F is I can actually just subtract those to get F. So I'm going to take the 345 minus the 300, and that gives me 45 Rand. Okay, so let's go and put that in quickly. Now we're going to go on to G. This is for the filling over here. So the amount that the dentist is charging for the filling is 370 Rand, and we need to work out the VAT and the total amount. So first for G, the VAT. So we've got 370 as the charge. We're going to divide that by 100 and multiply by 15 to get the VAT. And that gives us 55 round 50. Okay, and then for H, so let's just put that in quickly. Then for H, 
it's the total again, so I can just add those two to get H. So it is 370 plus 55 Rand 50. And, and that gives us 425 Rand 50. Okay, so that's how much we have for H. So now we have to go and work out I. Now I is the total amount due. So to work out I, we're going to take all of these amounts in this column over here and add them up. Okay, so let's go and work that out. So we have got for I, it's the total. So we're going to add 847 round 50. We're going to subtract 847 round 50 because that was a payment that was received. So that means that this, the account balance went down. Then we're going to add 517 round 50. We're going to add 287 round 50. We're going to add 345 rand. And we're going to add 425 round 50. Okay, so now, now let's go and work all of that out. And that should all give you 1,575 Rand 50. Okay, so let's go and put that onto our statement. Okay, so that is how we work with statements in financial maths. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.